All right, so conference title game previews. Now, obviously, Chris and I both cover college football for other entities, but we also like to discuss it on this show. So we're going to go at it a little bit differently this go-round. On today's show, we are going to talk about the team totals. Uh, basically talk about the matchups and then tell you which team total we like, and we'll keep that on our official sheet that's over at winningcureseverything.com slash picks. So, Chris, I want to start us off with the Conference USA title game here. And the Conference USA title game, Western Kentucky at UTSA. They're going to be playing in the Alamo Dome. The team totals here, Western Kentucky 37.5, UTSA 35.5. Is there an over or under on those team totals that that you would prefer? Oh. <laughs> Not, I mean, I think the number's pretty close. I don't know. I don't have I'll give you. I'll team. give you mine first. I think What's Western the one Kentucky, for the game? At, for the game at 73. I think Western yeah, Kentucky I, scores over 37 and a half. Okay, maybe. I don't know. I think that's a lot of points. It, it's UTSA definitely a lot of points. A good football team. This was uh this was a 52 to 46 game at Western Kentucky earlier in the season. But Western Kentucky is undefeated since then. They have won They've won seven straight games since they lost to UTSA. They have been absolutely rolling teams, and UTSA just feels like they have fallen off of a bridge. But at the same time, I mean, it's easy to get hyped up for a conference championship game. UTSA had this thing wrapped up weeks ago, right? Their their slot in this uh, title game. But that's that's mine. Western Kentucky over 37 and a half. Did you have an, a, one that you're going to put on there? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I I would go, I would go over for the game. Ah, okay, over 73. Okay, that sounds like a plan to me. All right, we will move to the Pac-12, and we've got Oregon and Utah playing in Vegas. Now, this is going to be a lot of fun. I do think uh, this was a whipping the last time that they played. 38-7, to Utah won in Salt Lake City just two weeks ago, and now, even though Utah beat them by 31 points, uh, they are now only favored by two and a half. Uh, the team totals here. Utah is 31. Oregon is 28 and a half. And, brother, I'll, I'll go on and give you my official play on this. Not official play. Obviously, my official plays are over on the BetUS show. Uh, but for me, I'm going to take Oregon under 28 and a half. They got physically manhandled by Utah the last time that they played. And even though there is something to playing in Salt Lake City, I just... I cannot see Oregon finding a way to score more than four touchdowns in a game like this unless they were to get turnovers, and Utah has not turned the football over in like six weeks. So I just I don't they, see how they're getting, get a bunch, they're getting a bunch of guys back, though, right? Oregon is? They, they're getting some guys back, but I don't think, like, they're not going to get C.J. Verdell back. Like, they're not going to be able yeah. to run the ball that easily against Utah's defensive line. Like, Utah's defensive line is awesome. So I, That's right. That's a, what I, is, I would go. I would go under on both of these. I go under on both of them. Yeah, okay. I would okay. 100% go under on both. Of them. So, so would that mean going under the total of 58? Oh, obviously on the game. Yeah. All right. Well, let me go on and put that one down then, <laughs> as opposed to as opposed to writing both of them down. That'll move us over to the MAC title game, and this will be the first Saturday game that we discuss. This one's going to be interesting to me. Kent State against Northern Illinois. Now, obviously. Anybody that follows me on Twitter knows that I had to deal with the wrath of the horde of Northern Illinois Husky fans just a couple of weeks ago when they wrapped up their their spot in this title game. This one's in Detroit. Kent State won the first matchup just a few weeks ago, 52-47. to 47. If you look at all of the defensive numbers, etc., I do not find a way that Northern Illinois keeps Kent State under 38.5 points. Sean Lewis, the offensive well, the head coach, uh, but former Dino Babers offensive coordinator, I think that he is going to score relentlessly in this game because I think there there are still more dominoes to fall in the coaching ranks, and I think that Sean Lewis is one of those guys that is next up for one of these bigger jobs. I think that he's going to put up a ton of points. He is going to make people notice. So for me, it's Kent State over 38.5. I just don't think that Northern Illinois' defense will be able to slow them down. Uh, I kind of like that also. You know, I, I think this is going to be higher scoring from both of them. 
So this is one where I would take the total on the game over. But but if I had to pick one of these two to go over or under, I would I would definitely go over with Penn State. That that makes sense. That makes. I just don't sense. see a lot of defense being played in this game. No, it's the MAC. I mean, there's a reason why the total is 74 and a half, and I think that thing could hit, you know, 77 by the time we get there on Saturday morning. I was, yeah, I was just, I was just about to say, I, I don't see it sitting there for the rest of the week. No, nah, me either. Uh, Big 12 title game in Arlington, Oklahoma State and Baylor. 46 and a half is the total on this one. Oklahoma State won this 24 to 14 in Stillwater earlier this year, and they completely, completely shut down Baylor's offense in the first half. Now that was with uh, Jerry Bohannon. All right, so the the team totals here, we have got Baylor at 20 and a half, and we've got Oklahoma State at 27. And I'll go ahead and tell you, I look at this, and I think Baylor under 20 and a half is where I'm going. I trust that Jim Knowles' defense. It doesn't matter to me which quarterback it is, but Jerry Bohannon may play, but he's dealing with the hamstring. And you understand how those things can can last forever, uh, even if he plays, he's not going to be 100%, especially for a guy that runs the football. I, that can really, really hurt an offense. I The backup for them played fine, but obviously you saw against Texas Tech that they were not the same football team. I I really like Oklahoma State here, but uh, but for me, it's Baylor under 20 and a half because I think that defense is just relentless. Well, I would take uh, Oklahoma State team total under. Uh, you give Dave Aranda... <laughs> <laughs> a second chance at an offense, and I guarantee you they score at least a touchdown less than they did last time. Well, they scored 24 last time. Their team total this time is 27. So you're uh, you're rolling Oklahoma State under 27? Yes, sir. I can, I can totally see that. This seems like it's going to be a really low-scoring game. Yeah, I think this is going to look like an old-school SEC game. Yeah, you got that right. You have got that right. All right, that, uh, that takes us over to... The Mountain West Conference title game. And we got Utah State and San Diego State. Uh, the total on this one is 50. San Diego State team total is 28. Utah State's team total is 23. Uh, this what The two stories here between Blake Anderson and Brady Hoke have been fantastic. Like, this is, I'm about to say, pretty good. Pretty oh, good, right? It's so awesome. Like, I love seeing these two guys be successful in new places, right? And and Brady Hoke was at San Diego State before, went over to Michigan, like all this kind of mess, and then I'm, now he's back. And he looks younger. He looks rejuvenated. What Kirk Maddox is doing on defense is awesome. But the way that I'm going to go on this is actually San Diego State under 28 total points for the game. And it's not because I think that Utah State is necessarily going to win or anything like that. I San Diego State scored 28 points on on UNLV, and Utah State has actually got a pretty feisty defense. I, I think that Utah State can keep the ball away from them quite a bit. They I know they like to pass the ball a lot, but they run a ton of plays, just a ton of them. I, I don't like San Diego State's offense, even when they switched to uh, the new quarterback, uh, whose name evades me right now. But I, I, think, I think under 28 for San Diego State is the way that I'm going to go on this. What was Utah State's total? 23. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wasn't trying to pause for dramatic effect. Are you good? I, was <laughs> uh, I think I think I'd go under that. Under think, the 23. This defense, I love Blake Anderson. I love the offense, and I love what he's been doing. This defense is something different. It's hey, something no, different. Not, not a lot of people just go in and score in, in the mid-20s against them. Well, that's uh, – it makes sense. Kurt Maddox, like what he's doing on defense, is awesome. I mean, it's it's the same same stuff that uh, Rocky Long and and Zach Barnett and all those guys or Zach Arnett, excuse me, were running there. And yeah, I mean, their defense is awesome. So under twenty three makes uh, makes perfect sense to me for Utah State. The next one on the board, our sixth one here, is the Sun Belt Championship game, and that would be between App State and Louisiana. Excuse me. Uh, Billy Napier's last game with the Raids and Cajuns. And the total on this is 53. Is Billy coaching? Yes, he is. Oh, I saw that. That shocks me. Yes, he is. He is coaching this one. He won't coach the bowl game, I believe, but he is coaching in the conference championship game. There, Florida is actually not officially introducing him in a press conference until Sunday. So after after this ball game is done. 
Louisiana won this one 41 to 13 earlier in the year. Uh, when I look at this, the the team totals are Louisiana 25 and a half and App State 27 and a half. Of course, App State is favored by three on the road here. Uh, I think Louisiana is going to be able to score. Like they they play to their level of competition and they have done it all season long. Uh, really, all of Napier's tenure, he has played to the level of competition. Uh, and that just has to do with the amount of talent that's actually on your team, right? Like they, they don't have enough to out talent a ton of people, but they are incredibly well coached. And when they feel threatened, they show up big. I think the over 25 and a half for Louisiana is the play for me. Uh, I'm not going to say that App State can't score 27 and a half. I, surely they can. I mean, but they only put up 13 on them back on October 12th. So I'm, I'm going to take Louisiana to, to score over the 25 and a half. So I was, I, we're, we're, we think it's going to be a high scoring game then because I like App State over the 27. I think this is going to be a different team. I think it's really, really, really hard to coach and motivate and prepare a team that you're leaving. So I mean, it, it does make sense. I just, I feel like the, the mood around the program is not one of he's a traitor, he left us, right? Like that's, that's kind well, of how obviously Notre Dame not, sees. Because if it yeah. was, then he wouldn't be coaching. Yeah, no, they're all incredible. Like the AD and the president have been, you know, sending out Go Gator stuff. They're very excited for him to get the opportunity. Uh, all the videos of the players, you know, congratulating Coach Napier and all that, they, they seem very excited about it. I, I do wonder about the motivation for this game, but, I mean, this is a conference title game at home. Uh, so There's I, I feel good about it. There's also two teams that have been playing a lot lately that, that in conference that don't like each other. Yeah, no, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> because they've both been the top of the heap, them in Coastal Carolina. It's basically the, the, the list of, of the great teams in this conference. Yeah, you are correct. You are correct. Uh, App State lost at home to Louisiana on a weeknight game last year. Uh, lost by three. It was like 24-21. to 21. This year, of course, it was 41-13, to 13, but App State was favored at Louisiana. Again, another midweek game, and App just got destroyed. Just destroyed on the road. So, going to be interesting to see exactly how that one plays out there because I think App is kind of tired of losing to this team. Uh, but we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. It takes us over to the SEC championship game. So we got Georgia and Alabama. We can talk all day about different storylines, etc. But what we're talking about here is these team totals. Uh, the total on the game is 49.5. It is Georgia 28 for their team total, Alabama 21.5. And, and I, I'll go ahead and tell you up front, my play on this is Alabama under 21.5. I think it actually opened at like Alabama 24 for their team total, and it's been bit, uh, been bet down quite a bit. I still think under 21 and a half is the way to go. This is an Alabama team that scored 10 points, and well, scored three points for 59 and a half minutes against Auburn. They scored uh, 20 points total against LSU. They, this is not a great Alabama offense, and when you get them off course, the way that Georgia's defensive line and linebackers can, they're going to bring blitzes from everywhere. I don't think Bryce Young's going to have time to throw. I don't expect them to have success going up and down the field. I, I think the under 21.5 is the play for me. Uh, 100%. That is the play. So the, the 28 for Georgia, I'm not touching because I could see them landing directly on that. But I just don't think Alabama's going to score much this weekend. Georgia still looks at themselves as the underdog against Alabama until they beat them. Doesn't matter what the numbers say. Like, <laughs> they still think that they are the underdogs here. So we're both riding Alabama under 21 and a half. Now we move over to the Power Six championship game that would be the AAC. And we have got Houston going to Nippert Stadium at night against Cincinnati. Team totals here, Cincy 32 and Houston 21. I, you know what, before I give mine out, Chris, what, what is your feeling on the way that this game might go? I think this is going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a fun game. I, I think Cincinnati scores with them. I think Houston finds a way to put points up. So I, I, I like the over in the game. What's Cincinnati's team total? Cincinnati's is 32. I think I'd go over Houston. All right, so Houston 21. So you would go Houston over 21. Yeah. 
All right, so I'm going to go Cincinnati under 32 uh, because this Houston defense is absolutely legit. I don't think that Cincy has really played anybody that is going to have the guys on the line of scrimmage. And I understand that they played Notre Dame uh, back weeks and weeks ago, uh, but that Notre Dame defense was not what that Notre Dame defense has morphed into towards the end of this season. Uh, I just I think Houston is going to be able to disrupt what Desmond Ritter likes to do. And we have seen when he is uncomfortable, he is not as successful. So I'm going to go with the under 32 here. I don't know that since he loses the game, but I think that Houston can keep this thing pretty close. And I, I will take yeah, too. Yeah, I will take the uh, the under 32 because I could I could absolutely see like a 28 24 kind of game. Remember, we saw this last year with Cincinnati. They beat Tulsa 27 to 24 in the uh, in the AAC conference title game, and I mean it, Tulsa just just absolutely whipped them on the line of scrimmage. Uh, or at least uh, whipped them is an exaggeration here. They stayed with them. They made them incredibly uncomfortable, and they put them in bad situations over and over and over again. Now, since he won the ball game late, but that's kind of how I see this one, right? I think that Houston's defense and their defensive line are going to give pressure to Ritter, and, uh, and I don't think they're going to get to that 30, uh, that 32 there. So we, we see this a little bit differently, but I, I do like your, uh, your Houston over 21 there. That's, that's not a bad yep. play. We will move to the Big Ten. We got two left here. So our Big Ten preview on this, Iowa and Michigan. I I see the team totals here, 16.5 for Iowa, 27 for Michigan. And this is one that I really have no idea on, right? <laughs> I got no idea which way to go with this. The last time these two teams met was 2019. Michigan won the game 10-3. to Michigan, I've heard multiple people say this, and I think they're dead on with it. Iowa is the generic brand Michigan. Like, Michigan does everything that Iowa does only better. And in that situation, Iowa kind of relies on teams to turn the football over. And I don't think Michigan does that. They, they have not been turning the football over a whole lot as of late. They seem to be really confident in the way that they're going about games. You look at, at Iowa's turnover margin... You take out their games against Indiana, Iowa State, etc., and their turnover margin is not great. I think it's like plus three on the season. Like they against the really, really bad teams, they feasted on turnovers. It was Maryland was the other one. They feasted on the turnovers in those games. Against everybody else, like Iowa turns the football over a lot too. I don't think there's any real gain for them. I think Michigan is going to shut them down defensively. Uh, so give me Iowa under 16 and a half here. I don't know what the limit is for Michigan to be able to score, but I, I don't think that Iowa scores a lot of points here. We're, we're the same on this one also. This is the way you got to go. You can't trust that Iowa offense for anything. No, uh, but, and I also don't trust uh, Michigan. Or I don't trust Iowa to be able to generate turnovers from Michigan. How's that? I, I don't think they're yeah. going to get cheap points here. I agree. All right, so the last one that we have, we have got the ACC title game, and that will be Pitt and Wake Forest in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is going to be an ABC game, by the way. Hey, Felica's not going to be at this one. They're going to hang out at the SEC championship game, I heard. So, team totals on this. Obviously, these are two high-flying offenses, etc. Wake Forest team total is 35. Pitt team total is 37. The total for the game is 71 and a half. And I think the only way that you can go on this is Pitt's team total over 37. Because I think that there is a world, uh, to use some of your uh, phrasing, there's a world in which Wake Forest can get shut down a little bit on offense by that Pitt defense. Pitt is number four in defensive adjusted sack rate, and Wake Forest is number one of four in in giving up that sack rate. So it's there's a strong chance that Wake Forest may not get to that 35. And I don't see any way that this Wake Forest defense finds a way to slow down Pitt at all. I think Mark Whipple in that offense with Kenny Pickett is going to roll. So give me the over 37 for Pitt. Yeah, we, we disagree with that. Now, I, I think it's going to be a hellaciously high-scoring game. I think they bust the 71, whatever it is, by by a lot. There's there's just no chance Pitt's going to shut this off. There's zero chance. Okay, okay. So you're, you're going to do the uh, the full game over 71 and a half. Yeah, that's, I think that's a lot. 
a complete lock of the whole week. Uh, yeah, you might be right about that. You might look. I said this right. several weeks ago. Outside of you know a couple of teams, Wake scoring fifty. If you want to beat them, you got to get to fifty. Okay, a few teams got them to the forties and made it look ugly. But nobody's held this team in the third. Yeah, no, you're you're right. You are right. Uh, the only one that was able to do it was Clemson, and I don't think Pitt's defense is that good. No, not even close. Not yeah. even a little bit. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.